Alright, plug into your surround sound, go grab your expensive designer headphones, whatever you gotta do, because we're about to do another tone wood test. <laughs> now, you remember a few months ago, I did a sort of pseudo-scientific tone wood study, and there were a lot of holes in the logic, and I did that on purpose because I was setting the stage for this. But first, a warning. In this video, I am going to talk about the existence of tone wood and whether it's true or not. I'm going to have product placements, I'm going to link to another YouTube channel, and I'm going to talk and I'm going to play. So if any of those things bother you, just like bug out right now. Go ahead, click, click right there. Okay, now that they're gone, let's have some fun. I also want to point out that I'm, I'm doing this video in real time. I've made all of these, but I haven't done any of the tests yet. So as I'm t speaking to you right now, I have no idea what's going to happen. In the first video, I put the same lace Alumatone pickups in three different guitars and did a blind listen to see if you could tell which was which. There were a lot of reasons this was unscientific, and I really enjoyed reading all the comments and guesses, because it was all over the map. <laughs> if you don't know me, I make guitars and other things out of reclaimed materials uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, I was surprised by the first test to see how different each guitar sounded, but there were a lot of variables not accounted for, and so more research needs to be done. Now, I could have gone out and bought like 10 of the same necks and you know 10 of the same pickups, whatever, and just built a bunch of identical guitars, and that probably would have worked fine, but I felt like there were still some variables that wouldn't be addressed, mainly in the setup. And if all the necks are different, I mean, just the one piece of wood could be better, etc. So I felt like this was the best way to do it, but more importantly, I thought like this was a really fun way to do it. I came up with this idea of making, in essence, an extended neck that holds all the critical components of the guitar that we could switch between different bodies. So now we could listen to each body with everything else being exactly the same. Literally. Originally I developed a one-piece neck that I thought would be a fun and slick build, but I decided instead to purchase a bolt-on neck and create an insert, quote, like mini body to bolt it into. I used maple for all of this, uh, with a rosewood fingerboard, probably fake. Pretty typical materials, but since the neck is a bolt-on, we can do the same test with necks made of different materials. Bell Forest Products generously donated the new wood that I used for this build. I asked them for maple to make the neck, and uh, ash, poplar, and mahogany, you know, for the bodies, because those are typical guitar woods. And then I also asked them to throw in one curveball, just some whatever random wood they wanted to, and they sent canary wood. I processed all this down to make some guitar body blanks, and of course I needed some reclaimed wood to use as well. So I used some floor joists from my neighbor's house. Uh, the house was built in the 60s, and he just recently did some remodeling. And then I also used a solid core door, which is basically just eighth inch plywood filled with sawdust. I used my CNC router parts machine to cut out the body blanks as well as the body insert. And uh, the great thing about CNC, of course, is the precision and the repetition. So for projects like this, it's pretty much essential. I made the bodies real thick, about an inch and three quarters. And so just to speed it up, I cut it out with a bandsaw and used a roundover bit to finish cutting it out instead of doing it on the CNC. Now the first body insert I made fit perfectly, but it fit perfectly for someone that wanted to take it in and out a lot. And I wanted it to be a tighter fit. So I increased the size by like one one hundredth of an inch and then cut another one out, which fit much tighter. And uh, that's going to help with tone transfer, which we'll talk about in a minute. I want to quickly mention my two other sponsors for this video. One is Stringjoy Guitar Strings, and they are based in Nashville, Tennessee, and they just love guitars and tone, and they make these amazing strings, and they're the only strings I put on the guitars I make. And my other sponsor is my brother from another mother, uh, Rob, over at Gemini Guitars. He makes uh, hand-wound pickups. He uses a lot of old pickup parts as well as new, and we're actually working on our own custom New Perspectives music pickups, which uh, are just awesome. He makes amazing pickups for an amazing price, and if you are making guitars or you just want to make your guitar cooler, you need one of these. I also laser engraved some of the stats about the density and the weight on each guitar, and if you really care and you want to get nerdy about it, you can just sort of take screen grabs of each shot here. Some of you might be thinking that this doesn't really work because the body's not glued together, but I don't think that's really an issue. You see, the way this works is when you pluck the strings, they vibrate the air, which is why you can hear them, but they also vibrate anything they come in contact with. When I was a kid, this is how I used to practice my bass guitar. I didn't plug it into the amplifier, I'd put the headstock up against the wall, and it would make it nice and loud, or loud enough for me to hear it without disturbing other people in the house, because the whole wall is vibrating from the transfer of tone just through the small contact point in the headstock right there. If the camera microphone isn't picking it up well enough for you, and I'm going to do it again a little closer, uh, try it at home with your own guitar. Just strum it 
and touch it to the wall and you will hear the difference. So the tone is transferring, the volume is transferring, the vibrations are transferring, and this will work just the same. Actually, probably better because it's making more contact. Listen. You need a mallet to get it in there. And that's why I think it's gonna transfer really well. Actually, I got it in by hand here. And that's gonna transfer as well as, as glue would, right? And this is a fully functioning guitar. It's not gonna come apart. If you wanna take it apart, I put these holes in the back. So you can... Pop it out like that, and then put it in your next guitar. Now, another option would have been to just use the same neck and hardware and bolt them onto multiple bodies, and that probably would have worked fine, but, you know, this is way more fun. And uh, there's a potential for setup, having some variation or some wear and tear, like the screw holes kind of wearing the wood out and getting not as good of a fit. Um, and then you might be thinking that, well, you know, none of this is going to make a difference because this whole piece of wood is all one solid thing, so it's all gonna sound the same because the bridge and the pickup are in the same piece of wood. And maybe that's true. If we just found out that just this little piece of wood is all you need for this, you know, mythical tone, then we're done. We're saving a lot of trees. Everything else can just be sawdust. One of the reasons that the tone wood debate can never really be solved is because tone is subjective. It's like saying that this color blue is better than that color blue. But even adding all that science into it doesn't necessarily make the difference because there's still that subjectivity thing. And I have a theory. I think that the mass and the density of the wood is going to increase the volume and it is going to increase the sustain of the guitar. But as far as any change on tone, which I mean if we were to define it as treble or bass or whatever, it wouldn't make a difference. That's my theory. So if I take this hollow core door guitar, which is made of sawdust, it weighs 4.3 pounds. I think that this denser canary wood, which weighs 5.2 pounds, is going to be a little bit louder and it is going to sustain a little bit longer. Is it going to sound better tone-wise? Well, again, that's subjective. Normally when I do these things, I like to film them in my shop because I think it looks better, but I'm going to pack all these up and take them home where I have a little bit more control over the setup and the recording and everything, and uh, we're going to do it there. So come with me. I'll show you my little home studio in the basement. Welcome to my home studio. Now the first test we're going to do is this sort of scientific one, and that's going to be basically what's on this video, and all the fun stuff is going to be over on my other channel, New Perspectives Music. So we're going to plug this directly into my Logic, right through the interface, so there's no amplifier in, in between, and we're just going to tune this up and just strum an E chord, and we're going to screen grab the wave so we can hear it, and we can see the wave, we can see how high the, the, the decibel level is, how long it lasts, and then we're going to do the same thing with all six other bodies, and compare the data. So the audio you're going to hear when I strum the chord is going to be the direct in audio, not the microphone.
Oops. And I made this this MDF body to just sort of hold it too, which I'm gonna do as well while we're at it. Yes, son. Are those bodies all soldered? Are those electric bodies? Yes, the every single one. <laughs> hey, you can step on camera if you want. Um, yeah, see, I soldered all the electronics are in this one body, so it doesn't matter. All these have no electronics, oh. so that way it's always just ready to go. It's a pretty simple solution. I have one left to do, and then we're gonna listen and see if they sound different. You think they're gonna sound different? Yeah. Which one do you think is going to sound the best? Whichever one's the hardest and dense, most dense. Yeah? Why do you say that? It's because the density, like every guitar normally has multiple layers, or like normally they're like really hard and dense, so they have like, like something like really good to work off of and have sound break on. And just so like the strings vibrate off of it. Yeah. That sounds about what my theory is, and we're going to find out in a minute. Science! <laughs> Hi! Okay, I'm going to play them all back to back right now. Um, not the whole thing for the whole sustain, but just the, the main meat of it. And I'm going to start, the first one's going to be the, the bass without the, the body attachments. And then I'm going to play through them. And you'll hear the actual audio recording that was recorded on the computer, not through the camera. So the first is just the maple body. Okay, now we'll do mahogany. Poplar. It's a little brighter. Ash. That sounds like identical to the mahogany to me. Listen, here's the mahogany. And here's the ash. Canary wood. Sounds the same as the mahogany and ash. Doug fir. Sounds the same too. Ah, solid core door. Good stuff. Might be a tiny bit louder. Surprisingly, because that's actually pretty light. It's heavier than the Doug Fur, though. And MDF, just for fun. Gotta love that MDF. Guitar champions. Alright, ready? This is cool. This is all of them together. I've been listening to these and jumping around a little bit, and I have to say that I'm surprised once again by the data. Now, of course, the guitar is set up to perform and sound that is absolute worse in this situation, just plugging it direct in. I mean, there's not even a tone knob in the guitar, uh, but that's okay, because we're just trying to compare the wood, right? Now, you'll see that this very top one is the bass test without any of the bodies attached, and this waveform is a little bit smaller and a little bit tighter than every other one, and all of these look very similar. They have some different peaks and whatnot, which I would, you know, attribute to human error more than anything. I was trying to strum 
as precise as possible, but I'm a human. Um, and really we'd have to do this like 50 times on each instrument to get a real full test. But from just doing it this one time, they all sound and look the same. They like surprisingly the same. Um, some of them seem to taper off a little bit more, um, you know, quicker than the other ones on the sustain. But when you look at the waveforms, it's, you can't even see it. It's so quiet. Like here, I'm blowing it all the way up and, and we can hear there's still sound there, but I, I can't see it anywhere. So it's so minute, I can't even tell which one's cutting out first. I have some suspicions based on when I stopped it, because when I did the recordings, I was listening and stopping it when it sounded like it was completely done. So it looks like the Poplar one sort of died out pretty quick, and then the Doug Fir. But the other thing I noticed is when I listened to all of them, the only one that sounded different from the others was the Poplar. It sounded a little bit brighter than the other ones, and that was the only difference I noticed uh, between them all and just listening to them in this situation. But we don't play music like this. We don't play in a laboratory. Okay. <laughs> This is more like how we play guitar. We plug them into amplifiers, we use microphones to record them, we use effects pedals, and we play them by moving our hands around and whatnot. So that's how you really can find out if there's some differences with this wood. And if you want to hear more of these guitars and how they stack up in their different configurations, go to my other YouTube channel, New Perspectives Music, and I have a whole bunch of videos up there, including ones where you get to try and guess which one's which. See you over there. Hey, I hope you found this fun and interesting to watch, and I hope it uh, sparks some creative ideas of your own, whether you're a musician or a maker or both, for some things that you might do. Now, you'll see that we have barely scratched the surface for what I can do with this system. I haven't even put finish on any of these yet, so there's that whole comparison. Never mind other pickups, neck configurations, wood configurations. What do you want to see me do with this system? What do you think I should make a guitar body out of? Concrete? Paper? Steel? Let me know. Leave a comment. Uh, I'm really interested in hearing from you. So the other thing that will help make this successful is to get as many minds involved as possible. So please share this with all your music nerd friends or all your maker nerd friends. Or even the ones that aren't nerds, I guess. Share it with everybody. Share it with your mom. I don't know. She might like it, you know. Share it with your high school band teacher. I bet you haven't talked to him in a while. Or her. Alright. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I'll see you around the interweb. Leave comments. Don't be shy. Be good.